we are now living in a new normal. This COVID-19 pandemic marks as one of the global challenges experienced in this generation. It forces every sector of our society to innovate in order to move forward. We at the Industrial Technology Development Institute of the Department of Science and Technology is trying every possible ways to continue our service to our people without compromising the safety of each and everyone.
Can you see my screen very clearly? Yes, ma'am, we do. Okay, very good. Um, uh, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. And ngayong araw na to, I, I really want to challenge myself. And because I know the topic is not a very easy topic. Uh, it's, it's quite complex, to be honest. And there is a lot of things that you have to understand to really uh, get to know, to really know and understand what are the roles of the innate immunity, what are the roles of immunity against virus infections. So I thought <coughs> I challenged myself to be able to give my lecture mostly in Tagalog and with the hope of uh, giving a lot of uh, details in our own uh, language so that we, you can better understand, hopefully, uh, hopefully. Um, so the topic for today is on immunology of viral infections. There's a very good uh, lecture on virology course by Professor Vincent Racaniello. It's available online. You can download it for yourself as well. And so what I did is I took parts of the, uh, his two lectures that comprise the int intrinsic and innate defenses, as well as the adaptive immunity for today's lecture. I thought I would be given a two-day lecture, but then um, I think, and I hope that with this lecture, you can at least have an overview of um, what are the functions of the in immune, res uh, immune responses against viral infections. Okay, so I'll start speaking in Tagalog. <laughs> Um, kapag nagkakaroon kayo ng infection, kailangan niyong maintindihan na merong at least may iba-ibang levels ng uh, protection na meron ng isang ang katawan inside their katawan ng tao, ng, ng hayop, o kung ano man ang host ng, uh, bar na tinatarget ng isang virus. At yung mga, yung mga uh, layers ng responses na meron tayo ay nahahati sa at least apat. So isa doon yung let me use my pointer. So isa doon yung anatomical and chemical barriers na nagko, ang, ang nagkocompose ay may mucus. So from saliva, for example, kapag ka meron tayo mga viruses na uh, nagta-target or na ta transmit orally, meron tayong mucus, uh, saliva uh, from, from the mouth, papunta sa uh, esophagus, sa intestine, may ma meron tayong mga mucosa like my stomach. Acid na, 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 na target or pinipi, uh, sinusuppress niya yung proliferation ng virus. Yung tears sa uh, mata, yung skin natin, yung may mga keratinocytes yan na pinoprotektahan tayo. And then kapag so napaharaming virus ang ina-encounter natin every day, pero dahil meron tayong anatomical chemical barriers, meron ng paunang defense ang ating katawan. Kung sakaling meron tayong sugat, hindi natin posible na mag-penetrate agad yung virus. Pero meron tayong second, third, and fourth layers. Ang next na layer ng host defense ay natawag na intrinsic. Ito yung mga factors na nandito, nandito na sa, nasa katawan natin. Hindi siya mostly tinitrigger ng um, virus infection dahil nandun na sila, na-produce na sila ng cells. Ang next ay, and ang examples ng mga intrinsic defenses ay uh, for example, yung RNA silencing, autophagy, uh, CRISPR, apoptosis. And then, kung hindi mag-work yun, meron din innate immunity. So innate immunity naman, nangyayari yun within minutes and hours. And all the time, natitrigger siya ng virus infection. So kapag, ka, kapag ka, uh, pumasok yung virus, sa cells through endocytosis, nagtitrigger yun ng 
uh, sensing pathways na magte-trigger ng interferon production, ng interferon uh, ISGs. And then, kapag ka na-trigger na yung ISGs, yung ISGs ay hahanapin naman ng mga sentinel cells. Yung sentinel cells ay, example, ay like dendritic cells, um, NK cells, and yung NK cells, dendritic cells, uh, kina, kinokopya na lang isang peptide na meron ng virus para i-present naman sa lymphocytes, which is either yung T cells and yung B cells. And then, dun na nangyayari yung acquired immunity. And kailangan natin maintindihan yung acquired immunity and usually um, na, uh, ito yung uh, theory ng pagbabaccinate. And nangyayari siya uh, in days, in usually uh, days, weeks, and in particular, kung vaccine, kung kailangan natin mag-trigger ng acquired immunity and memory cells dahil sa vaccine, nangyayari siya within weeks. And in theory, usually, yung pinaka-peak na meron tayo for um, B, uh, T cells and B cells is around three weeks. Kaya, naka, kaya meron tayong concept na um, ang vaccination na, na meron tayong protection or protective uh, levels dahil sa vaccination after three weeks. So examples ng um, intrinsic defense interference, um, CRISPR, um, epigenetic silencing, and um, meron yung mga ibang proteins na meron na tayo sa cells. And I explained to you isa-isa. Pero unang-una yung RNA interference. Although yung topic ko, it says uh, vertebrates, this is the only uh, slide na meron on na uh, uh, na nagkakompress ng plants and invertebrate cells. So yung RNA interference, and usually nangyayari ito sa RNA viruses, once yung RNA viruses ay nagpenetrate sa cells, ang host cells ay merong dicer. Dicer kasi dinadice niya ang um, viral na, na nadetect niya na double-stranded RNA. So kapag nakadetect ang dicer ng double-stranded RNA sa cytoplasm, kinakat niya and usually nagkakat siya ng around uh, 12 to 20 uh, base per length. And yun, yung nagiging, and yun ay nagiging template para magkaroon ng siRNA. So kapag uh, nagkaroon ng template ng RSA, siRNA, meron tayo sa sa ang host uh, na complex na tinatawag na RNA induced silencing complex. And so, yung RNA induced com silencing complex may kasama pa siyang isang protein na tinatawag na arcanon. So, yung complex na to, ang ginagawa nila together with the siRNA na na produced or na cut ay uh, kinocomplement niya yung iba pang uh, single-stranded viral RNA. And kapag na-complement na yun, kinakat niya yung, mga va yung viral RNA. So nangyayari, hindi nagkakaroon ng uh, expression ng viral proteins, so hindi nagkakaroon ng virus infection. Pero dahil ang mga viruses ay meron silang uh, matatalino, meron silang strategies, at ang mga strategies na yun ay tinatawag na countermeasures. So, kaya sinabi ko, yung siRNA ay used na develop siya sa, na, ident, na discover siya sa plants and invertebrates. And mayroon ng mga ay na-identify na siRNA sa germ cells ng humans, pero hindi pa natin um, exactly alam kung ano ang roles na ginagawa if ever antiviral siya. Um, another protein na meron ang, ang isang host, and yung example dito ay in relationships sa uh, HIV-1. So, sa tingin ko, familiar kayo or may nanahinig kayo ng mga protein na tinatawag na APOBEC. So, ang APOBEC ay family siya ng protein na, uh, which stands for um, apolipoprotein B mRNA editing catalytic 
polypeptide. And ang nangyayari, so isa sa mga type ng apobetic niya ay A3G-F. Um, so ang ginagawa ng apobetic ay um, ang ginagawa ng apobetic ay nagbabind siya sa and after magbind sa virus, may integrate ngayon yung apobetic sa viral genome. At ang presence ng apobetic ay nag-i-inhibit ng DNA synthesis. So nagkakaroon ng mutation. Specifically, ang ginagawa ng APOBEC ay uh, natawag siya ng cytidine um, deacetylases. Ginagawa niya, minimutate niya yung uh, G sa A. So yung G ay, ay may partner na C sa so G to C. And kapag karoon, nagkaroon ng uh, single-stranded DNA, yung C ay, ay nagkakaroon, yung, nagkakaroon ng, anyway, ang nangyayari ay nagkakaroon ng mutation from C to A. And yung mutation nito ay nag-trigger ng DNA uh, synthesis inhibition. Pero ang nangyayari sa HIV ay merong HIV, HIV-1 ay merong viral protein na tinatawag na VIF. So another countermeasure to. Ang ginagawa ng VIF ay nagbabind siya sa APOBEC and ang binding niya sa APOBEC ay nagkakos ng ubiquitination ng APOBEC. And once ang isang protein ay may ubiquitinate, pinaprocess siya sa proteolysosome para malize yung protein. So, ang nangyayari, um, dinidegrade niya ang APOBEC. Sa once na nag-infect ang HIV, dinidegrade niya yung APOBEC. So, dahil degraded yung APOBEC, nakakapag-proliferate uh, productively yung HIV cells. So, ang APOBEC, hindi lang siya isang klase. Nakita ng mga scientists na nag-evolve yung APOBEC as a response ng host towards a virus infection. So makikita nyo dito sa right na sa iba-ibang hayop, may iba-ibang uh, 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 types ng apobec. And ang pinakamaraming types ng apobec ay ang bats. And, and that is very rational kasi ang bats ay isa sa mga um, animals na uh, napakarami ng virus infections. So marami silang APOBEC na directed towards sa iba-ibang virus na ina-encounter ng bats. So really, very, very smart strategy of the virus. Next is yung apoptosis. So usually, in isang normal cell, kapag uh, na-identify na cell na may foreign, not even just virus infection, nagtitrigger siya ng apoptosis. And kapag nagtrigger ng apoptosis, nagkakaroon ng mga so na, nangyayari, uh, nagdi-divide, nag-necrose yung, yung cells, nagdi-divide, and nagkakaroon ng mga apoptotic bodies. Yung mga apoptotic bodies sa isang virus infection, usually nagko-contain uh, siya ng mga virus peptide. And yung virus peptide na yun ay nagiging uh, uh, ay uh, ina-identify ng macrophages o ng sentinel cells, dendritic cells, at ginagamit yun ng dendritic cells para i-present sa lymphocytes, either B cells or T cells para malays yung, um, yung proteins or yung virus infected cells na nagpokontain ng specific na uh, peptide. So, ito ay um, uh, electron micros, uh, uh, an image na isang cell na nakikita niyo may mga blebs. And itong mga blebs na to ay apoptotic bodies. And so, minomonitor siya ng mga sentinel cells. And yung sentinel cells, ipapaliwanag ka later. So, kailangan niyo lang ma... Um, I remember na yung sentinel cells are either yung macrophages and yung dendritic cells and K cells as well. So question, 
intrinsic defenses are always present. Uh, which of the following are included? So there are antibodies, T cells, epigenetic silencing, uh, skin, and mucus. So which one is the answer? I hope by now you thought, let us see. So um, hindi ko na ipaliwanag yung epigenetic uh, silencing, pero definitely not antibodies and not cells. And, and skin and mucus ay examples ng anatomical defenses. Ang antibodies and T cells ay example ng adapted, adaptive in immun immunity. And ang epigenetic silencing kasama ng autophagy, RNA silencing, um, uh, CRISPR, mga examples siya ng intrinsic defenses na meron sa cells. So going back sa sinabi ko kanina, yung, uh, in, yung immune system ng isang host ay may tatlong layers. So na nagbigay ako ng example of anatomical and chemical barriers and then ng intrinsic. And now we move on to innate immunity. Ang innate immunity are usually activated within minutes to hours after infection. And ang isang sentinel cells, which either dendritic cell, macrophages, and natural killer cell, is a composition ng innate uh, immunity. As well as in cytokines. So in cytokines, yung mga pinuproduce ng uh, sentinel cells, which also uh, includes your uh, interference. And also, uh, this is really complicated one, uh, the complement pathway. Um, so the cytokines, sentinel, and complement ang uh, kinocompose na yung innate immune system. And then another role ng innate immune system ay siya yung naglilink to adaptive immunity. So usually, nagpapatrol sila ng, um, around the body and in-identify nila whatever is foreign and sila yung nagpapresent to uh, lymphocytic cells para sa further lysis ng infected cells. So paano na-recognize ang, ang um, innate immunity? <clears throat> Back in 1980, May mga Germans na, na usually uh, years ago, kapag inaaral natin yung physiology and a lot of genes for humans, isa sa mga models ay ang Drosophila. And it is really a very good model. Kapag inaaral yung differences ng behavior, differences ng, lot, ng genes sa katawan, napakagandang model ang Drosophila. <clears throat> At ang isang sa na-identify nila na gene noong 1980 ay ang toll gene. And ang toll gene ay nakita na may role sa immunity uh, ng Drosophilus against the microbe. And later on, 1997, na-identify na mayroong toll-like uh, receptors na na-identify sa mammals. And yung toll-like receptors, meron siyang uh, very important roles kapag ka mayroong virus infection. So you were just talking about 1980, 1990. And 1997. It's not. It was really very recent when young study now in about immunity and innate immunity have become uh, very broad and very specific. But it is important. And that is uh, identification and toll like receptor. Ngayon, ang toll-like receptors ay isa sa members ng isang malaking family na tinatawag na pattern recognition receptors. So aside from toll-like receptors, ang toll-like receptors na identify ng um, nag-identify ng mga uh, na, na identify niya ay uh, Proteins, nucleic acid, glycans, uh, lipopolysaccharides in terms of bacteria. Marinating seed uh, type lectin receptors, usually they recognize in glycans, guys, uh, um, 
uh, fung fungi, and then also sa bacteria. Mending mga nucleotide binding and ligamerization uh, domain like receptors, usually nasa cytoplasm sila. And yung pinaka uh, famous o oh, na mas lagi yung maririnig ay mga yung rig eye uh, recept receptors. So yung rig eye receptors, very common siya, especially sa mga viral RNA. And once na yung viral RNA ay nag-release ng uh, genomes sa cells, nag-trigger siya ng rig eye sensing pathway, and usually via MAVs, mitochondria adapter protein. And ito yung nag-trigger ng production ng type 1 interferon, type 2 interferon, type 3. And then, yung production ng interferon, nag-trigger naman siya ng production ng um, uh, interference stimulating genes. And yung mga cytokines, important yan later sa adaptive immunity. So, uh, meron tayong um, pattern recognition receptors. Yung pattern recognition receptors, dahil, dahil meron tayo nun, of course, yung partner nun ay yung mga PAMs. So, yung mga PAMs naman, yung mga um, uh, signatures of peptides na meron ng mga uh, pathogens na na-identify sa bawat receptor. So, for example, sa cytomegalovirus na na nagta-target, na tinatarget niya ay TLR2 uh, receptor. Sa respiratory syncytial virus, TLR4. Um, for other viruses na, na endocytos cells, iba-ibang viruses, possibly double-stranded RNA viruses, single-stranded, um, and uh, those others with CPG motif. So, um, yung presence ng mga RNA, nagtitrigger siya ng um, toll-like receptor genes. And napakarami ng toll-like receptors. There's TLR3, 8, 9, and yung binding ng uh, viral genome, either RNA, single-stranded or double-stranded, nagtitrigger siya ng cascade. So, yung cascade na downstream nun ay nagkakos ng mga phosphorylation. Yung phosphorylation yung, ay nag-a-activate ng mga transcriptional factors. And isa doon yung IRF3, NF-kappa-B, IRF7, and then it's going translocate now. So this is your cells, your plasma membrane, this is your cytoplasm, and this is your nucleus. So it's going to translocate the transcription factors from cytoplasm to the nucleus. And she yung nagkukos ng gene expression para um, ma kapag produce ng interference, either interference alpha, beta, lambda, and so on. And yung so, isa to sa yung toll like receptor. So, another one is yung rigai. So, yung rigai naman, kapag ka, ay another, um, another uh, path, pattern recognition receptor. So, yung rigai, usually, yung makikita nyo sa lahat ng, sa most studies ng uh, viruses is yung stimulation ng rigai, uh, ng MAVs from mitochondria. <laughs> and the same, nagtitrigger siya ng um, sensing pathways na magkakos ng phosphate cascade, translocation ng mga transcript transcription factors from cytoplasm to the nucleus na magtitrigger again ng interference. So yung goals ng PAMs and yung receptors ay para ma-identify I, I e identify yung um, foreign from um, pathogens and mag -trigate, trigate, trigger ng cascade ng stimulation ng innate immune response. Um, again, as nabi ko kanina yung about the countermeasures, um, 
meron definitely ang mga viruses na viral modulators of sensing. And isa ito sa lagi natin inaaral kapag ka merong virus infection. And importante ito para makita natin kung paano natin uh, paano magde-design ng vaccine, paano magde-design ng drugs against uh, uh, virus infection. So, kita nyo dito may mga viral modulators of sensing. For example, yung HBV polymerase. Um, sinusuppress niya yung Rigai pathway sensing. Yung HBV and HCV protease. Kinatarget niya yung MAVs. Recently, nakita natin yung SARS uh, coronavirus 2 alpha variant. Uh, meron siyang ORF6 na tinitrigger na, uh, na nagbabind sa another host protein na tinatarget naman yung PBK1. And all of this leads to suppression ng uh, sensing pathway para makaproduce ng interference. So not just RNA viruses, but also DNA viruses. And so in DNA viruses, meron din silang ways para i yung uh, signaling pathway na mag-trigger this time for DNA viruses usually use a sting. And then sting naman, uh, it, again, this stops, for example, HPV polymerase, stops UV catenation. And again, kapag na-target nila yung sting, i-repress -re nila yung pathway towards production ng interference. The question, which of the following, I think, allow the innate immune system to distinguish micros from self? So A, cytoplasmic helicases, TLRs, anti-TLRs, antibodies, apoptosis, apopec, and ULUV depot. <clears throat> so definitely one thing that uh, distinguishes micros are the cytoplasmic helicases because of the pattern recognition receptors and the mga PAMPs na sa, uh, particular na virus. So the answer here is cytoplasmic helicases and TLRs. So let's now go to interference. Just give me one moment. Just give me one moment. I just really want to remove this uh, bar because it's in covering lights. Okay. Let's talk about interference. So, ang interference naman na identify siya nung um, 1957. And Paano siya na-identify? Dahil mayroong mga chickens na na in sa non-infectious um, influence. And so usually, kapag may virus infection sa lab, ang ginagawa namin ay, ginagawa namin ay yung virus inoculate sa cells. Um, after a few hours, makikita nyo na, um, after a few hours, makikita, nakikita like around 10 hours later, may mga um, soluble interference or soluble proteins na nag interfere sa virus infection. And usually, nakikita siya sa media. Or sa <clears throat> so, na-identify yung interference. Um, na-identify yung mga interference from exposing yung chicken cells sa non-infectious uh, influence of virus. So, yung interference ay pinaproduce ng virus-infected cells and not just virus-infected cells, also uninfected sentinels. Sometimes um, within the virus-infected cells, habang na infect ng virus yung, for example, area cells, usually nag-start na siya mag-produce din ng interference para ma-prevent yung infection ng virus. And so, some, sa, sa mga assays like plaque assay, makikita nyo kung ito yung, mga, ito yung reason kung bakit merong uh, small plaques, larger plaques. 
And this is just effects of a virus infection. <clears throat> So here, yung virus nagbinds epithelial cells, yung binding ng virus and yung pag-endocytose ng uh, cells ng viruses ay nag-trigger ng production ng cytokines. And then yung production ng cytokines naman nag-trigger na uh, mapatrol siya ng mga uh, immature dendritic cells. And then yung immature dendritic cells na-activate magiging siyang mature dendritic cell, nagkakaroon ng conformational change. And then sa conformational change na in-expose na yung peptide. So there are, there are different inter type 2 and type 3 fears. Sa ngayon, merong uh, 13 subtypes of interferon alpha and one type of interferon beta. Type 2 is, is interferon gamma. And type 3 is interferon lambda. Ang pinaka-importante yung concept dito ay yung mga interferons na to, meron silang specific na protein and a receptor. For example, interferon alpha, meron siyang interferon uh, alpha receptor, gamma is gamma receptor, and lambda is lambda receptor. So kapag ka tinitingnan natin yung um, anong interferon ang produce. Pwede tayong mag-introduce sa cells ng just the pure um, interferon gamma or pwede nating i-modify yung cell na magkaroon lang ng um, interferon gamma receptor and mag accept lang siya dapat ng interferon gamma. So, ganun ka-specific. And yung pathway din na tinitrigger ng type 1, type 2, and type 3 can vary. Some most of the time it's overlapping pero merong ding pagkakaiba. So sa lab kapag inaaral mo whether ang isang virus ay nagte-trigger ng uh, la lambda interferon production, pwede nating i-inhibit yung <clears throat> yung mga genes na for example T TK Jack1 and TK2. The next one is the interference signal transduction. <clears throat> so, kaya si nabi ko kanina yung interference alpha and beta is rapid, nangyari siya within hours, and nagdedecline din siya um, afterwards. So, kap importante na kapag ka nagaaral tayo ng ng interference stimulation, ni minu monitor natin yun per hour, kasi nagiiba iba. Meron ding mga interference na na produce in early time points of virus infection, and meron ding mga interference na produce in later time points of virus infection. But more importantly, yung interference binding, papunta sa interference receptor, nagkokosya ng synthesis ng cell proteins, and that includes um, interference stimulated genes or yung ISGs. And yung na produce na ISGs ay thousands, a lot. So kapag ka nag-aaral tayo ng, ng mga interference stimulated genes in the virus infection, maraming candidates na, na nakikita and maraming na stimulate ng mga viruses. But in every viruses, meron ding mga specific na ISGs na mas mataas kumpara sa ibang viruses. So importante na tinitingnan Important aralin o tingnan kung ano yung specific na niacin na usually na trigger ng isang particular na virus. Um, dahil napakarami ng ISGs, up to now, marami pa rin ISGs ang unknown. So, most of the time, kapag ka nag-identify tayo ng ISGs and then ISGs na napaka-importante sa virus infection, um, pinipili natin yung mga ISGs na not yet well characterized para makita natin yung roles ng particular na ISGs. So, isang example ng ISG ay te tetherine or CD137. And this is seen in HIV-1 infection. Ang tetherine ay... Usually, kapag nag-identified as yeast, in-identified or kinakaracterize natin kung saan yung location. So, yung tetherine ay nasa my plasma membrane. And ang role ng tetherine ay to tether. So, makita dito, nag-bridge siya. Binibridge niya yung iba, yung um, uh, HIV virus particles. Possibly din sa on the level ng endocytosis, binibridge niya. And dahil 
lahat na tether yung uh, virus due to tethering, hindi nagkakaroon ng virus spread. And ito ay isa sa mga um, images kung saan nakita nyo dito, mayroong linear virus particles and they are held by tethering. So dahil dito, hindi nagkakaroon ng virus spread. But another countermeasure is that HIV-1 has NEF protein. And an NEF protein is a tethering uh, antagonist. So in the presence of NEF, pwede niyang um, isuppress yung function, uh, isuppress yung NEF protein. And so yung uh, functional uh, NEF, uh, tethering will not be useful. So another ISG is na very common na makikita niyo sa mga studies these days ay IFEATS. And napakaraming mga IFEATS. So IFEATS, um, example ay IFEAT1. So ang mga viruses, meron sa iba-ibang structures. And usually sa isang normal cell, yung five prime structure niya, napaka-importante siya. Napaka marami yung uh, role para mag trigger na paano niya magagamit yung host machinery para mag-produce ng sarili niyang viral protein. So, uh, normally, ang host's mRNA ay mayroong cap. And normally, dito makikita nyo, so ito ay example na structure ng cap ng isang mRNA. And within that cap, uh, methylated ang after that. Pero, Yung iba-ibang virus, may iba-iba siyang strategies para mag-produce ng uh, viral proteins. May virus na walang cap, may virus na um, merong very complicated RNA structure, which is called IRES. And here, meron mga virus na walang methylation, uh, two, two prime zero methylation. And ito yung mga imposition. So kahit merong cap, or even viruses na triphosphorylated, ina-identify siya ng mga ISGs. And here is an example of an IFIT1 nag-identify ng RNA na walang a 2 prime zero methylation. And ang role ng IFIT1 ay sinusuppress niya yung uh, virus translation. So ito ay uh, components ng translation machinery sa cells. So kapag ka na-block ng IFIT1, ang 5 prime N ng isang virus, yung translation machinery ng cell ay walang isang way para mag-attach sa 5 prime N para mag-cost ng uh, a viral protein translation. So ito ay isang example where ito ay um, IFIT1 and this is the 5 prime N of the uh, a virus and nakita niyo kung paano parang um sino surround o nirarap ng ifit 1 yung 5 prime n and that alone can uh inhibit virus translation next is um ifit m3 i just included this because recently the sars cov2 particularly the um um, Omicron variant, yung recent studies uh, sa consortium, nakita nila yung role ng IFIT M3 para inhibit ang uh, Omicron variant. And so, ano yung role ng IFIT M3? Ang IFIT M3 ay, so once yung virus ay nag-enter sa cells, meron siya mga proteins na uh, kailangan mag-anchor sa plasma membrane and which causes virus uh, fusion para magkaroon ng endocytosis. Ang nangyayari with IFIT M3, pinipigilan niya yung process ng complete process ng fusion. So dahil doon, hindi nagkakaroon ng full fusion, hindi nagkakaroon ng um, endocytic uh, virus uh, entry. So, walang virus infection. So, dahil maraming interference and, and yung ISGs I have really important roles, 
one of you would just tell me now, why don't we just give interference to um, COVID patients? And why don't we just constantly use interference as a, a very good therapeutic? Uh, while napakaraming role ng interference and ISGs, kailangan natin maintindihan na yung interference has very dramatic physiological consequences. So it causes fever, chills, nausea, malaise, and every time na merong virus infection na nag-trigger ng interferon production, kahit na anong virus, not necessarily respiratory viruses, meron tayong flu-like symptoms. So it makes us really sick. And this is related sa, sa um, pillars ng inflammation. So how, next question is, how do interference limit uh, viral replication? So interference directly inhibit viral translation. Um, uh, the lies viral particles, they induce ISGs, damage cell all around their body. Then treated cells or look like uh, some neural neurons. So the reason why they call dendritic cells is really because of this a uh, very intricate uh, processes uh, the cells. And this is a dendritic cells as well. And then you can see here, it is bound to <clears throat> a foreign particle, which is the red one. So as I have said, in dendritic cells, I nasabong katuan natin. So intestine, my dendritic cells, these, are, these the red ones are viruses and these ones are uh, dendritic cells. It's the skin, my dendritic cells, embed sa epithelial lining. This one is a dendritic cells and you can see here a dendritic cells with its process outside or into the lumen of the intestine. So once you my dendritic cells na identify na lang na my foreign body and identify na lang yung peptides, Pumapasok sila sa, or natatransport sila sa, lymph, sa lymphoid organs. Ang isang lymphoid organs, meron siyang um, afferent uh, pathway na mag accept ng mga uh, sentinel cells na nagdadala ng uh, peptides. And then, it will be processed and then afterwards, magkukos siya ng afferent. So, Although we always say dendritic cells, napakaraming type ng dendritic cells. Merong dendritic cells of blood, may dendritic cells of tissues. And dendritic cells supplies ng dahil CD8, CD4, CD11, plasmatoid, um, so tissue naman, may langer hands, thermal, CD103, and really a lot. So ganun, I just want to stress na ganun karubost yung katawan natin. And uh, any host, especially human cells, is very, very robust to uh, combating any virus infection. So, and dendritic, for example, so some sentinel cells and dendritic cells. So, and dendritic cells, there are toll-like receptors, they receive either virus proteins, inflammatory cytokines, or in dead cells. If a process yells, and magkukosya ng um, presentation via MHC class 2. And then, uh, usually, yung circulating the dendri dendritic cells are immature dendritic cells. Once they receive yung virus, inflammatory cytokines, na activate sila. And that activation causes a maturation or conformational change. Kapag nagkaroon ng conformational change, nakapresent naka naka na yung um, peptides of a particular um, pathogen. And then, kapag uh, na-exposed yun, they receive yun ng naive T-cells and in the dendritic cells, then we'll produce the cytokines. And then, these two, I mag-trigger na uh, they receive ng naive T-cell and mag activate siya ng T-cells, which will also trigger several, in, in, several other um, pathways. So again, so host defense, marin like intrinsic. Intrinsic is always present, even in uninfected cells. 
and I've just told you about innate immunity, and then now we move to adaptive uh, immune system. And a very important and distinct thing about adaptive immune system, I tailored as a pathogen, and also it has memory cells. So a very brief definition, so myelin immunized adaptive immune cells, my leukocytes, my lymphocytes. So leukocytes consist of monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and neutrophils. So so the general term for white blood cells, I leukocytes. And lymphocyte is a subset of the leukocytes. And this contains your T cells, B cells, and NK cells. And they have variable antigen uh, detecting cell surface receptors. Um, again, going back, kung paano sila naproproduce, naproproduce sila sa bone marrow. And from the bone marrow, nagsisimula sila sa hematopoietic stem cell, which differentiate into uh, myeloid progenitor and lymphoid progenitor. And so, dito natin nakikita yung uh, uh, basophil and magtitrigger siya with into yung fusion ng sa isang vesicle with yung peptide or viral uh, component. And then in MHC class 2 with the peptide of the virus will be presented. So, this is your um, sentinel cells presenting to a cytotoxic T cells. This is a lymphocyte. And then, as I've said earlier, meron um, afferent na nagdadala ng mga uh, dinadala yung ng sentinel cells papunta sa lymphocyte. And then yung afferent. Marinig nyo kapag ka may inflammation, nagkakaroon ng uh, change ng permeability ng uh, var change ng permeability ng vessels. And nakikita rin ito sa lymphocytes. So, so within the lymphocytes, meron dyan mga capillaries. So sa capillaries, kapag yung capillaries nagiging siyang mas uh, permeable. Ibig sabihin, dun sa, sa, sa blood vessels, nakaka-penetrate yung mga lymphoid cells para magkaroon ng circulating uh, B cells, T cells, papunta naman para ma-identify niya kung nasan yung uh, site of infection. And then uh, from encountering that, mag-cause ng lysis ng infected cells. Within our body, marami tayong uh, collection of lymphocytes. So sa, sa Tagalog na tawag natin yung mga kulani, um, kapag ka meron tayo na karoon ng bakuna, um, yung axillary lymph nodes, nagkakaroon ng swelling, yung swell, swollen or ha, um, increased ng um, number of cells. So once na naka-recognize ang B cells at T cells ng antigen, nagkakos siya ng increased number of cells from 1,000 to 50,000 fold. And so ito yung nagkakos ng lymphadenopathy, kaya nagkakaroon ng swelling ng lymph nodes. So kapag ka may uh, infection, yung regional lymph node ay at the trigger. Um, yung immune system ng host ay located siya sa iba-ibang parte ng katawan. Meron tayong natawag na gut-associated, mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. So ito yung gut, ito yung um, epithelial cells sa gut, my M cells na nagtatransport ng antigen towards uh, lymphoid cells. Here in the intestine, yung pears patches. So within that, again, parang uh, lymphoid uh, tissue, merong blood vessels and may lymphatic vessels. So ito yung mga nagdadala ng mga uh, uh, lymphocytes. Within the skin, as I mentioned very early on, meron tayong keratinocyte. And ang keratinocyte, uh, nag-identify uh, isa sa, sa phagocytic cells uh, together with Langerhans cells. Ito yung mga patrols natin sa, um, sa epider, uh, on top, within yung epidermal line. So what is the property of innate instruction of adaptive immunity? As a first, uh, it's used for presentation of our peptides and MHC class 2 to CD4 T cells. 
endocytosis of viral proteins, activations of dendritic cells by cytokines, sensing by TLRs. So actually the answer is all of the above. So sensing of the TLRs, the cost ng um, and trigger para magkaroon ng uh, stimulation ng adaptive immunity, kapag ka nagkaroon ng activation ng um, dendritic cells, usually once it identifies cytokines and nagko produce ng cytokines, nagko-cost din yun ng um, stimulation adaptive immunity, viral peptides, and MHC. So all of the above. Um, within adaptive immunity, Napaka-important yun naman, tinan natin yung concept ng antibodies. So an antibody is composed of uh, a light chain. It's a complex. Two light chains and two heavy chains. And important dito, uh, the first part, this part, is a very different functional role. Uh, it's for binding antigen. And the, the lower part is binds receptor to confer signal. Um, very important, ito natin, lagi natin tinitingnan dahil dito nagkakaroon ng um, binding ng antigen. So yung epitopes na meron ng isang antigen yung vir yung, or yung virus, for example, yung spike ng SARS, dito nagbabind din. So kapag ka merong infection, yung serum antibody level ay nag-respond. So nakita natin na, uh, for example, kapag ka if this is a vaccination, kapag ka merong first dose ng vaccination, um, it doesn't happen immediately, but within from two weeks, nagkakaroon ng uh, stimulation ng primary anti-A response if you give an antigen A. And then, um, so taang usually ang antibody levels tatasya, and then bababa din eventually. Because there is no need for that. So that's why, unless there is a constant exposure, so possibly na tumaas agad yung uh, antibody levels natin against a particular virus. So as you can see here, in the second dose, and nagbigay ng antigen A and antigen B, yung response, yung secondary anti-A response caused a burst of serum antibody level, which is higher than the primary uh, level. And this is what we expect kapag ka merong uh, secondary infection or kapag nagkakaroon ng secondary booster shots. And because yung antigen B ay hindi siya na introduced beforehand, yung anti primary an uh, anti-B anti response ay nagsisimula pa lang. So the concept of antibodies, antigen, and epitope. So yung antigen, so yung molecules na nag induce ng immune response. So pwede siyang protein, DNA, RNA, lipid, polysaccharides. And then yung epitope naman, yun yung part ng antigen. So antigen could be a viral protein. Let's say, let's say uh, a spike, uh, spike protein of coronavirus. Yung epitope na nandun sa spike, usually yung uh, receptor binding domain. And then whenever we produce antibodies, in our serum, marami tayong monoclonal antibodies. And yung mga monoclonal antibodies natin, specific yun to uh, particular um, infections. But whenever we produce, it's also possible to isolate or separate yung monoclonal antibodies. And monoclonals are, are against yung isang, a single epitope. So yung binding, pwede siyang binding sa linear epitope, pwede din siyang conformational epitope. So maraming, mayroon tayong iba-ibang uh, antibodies. And iba-iba rin yung responses ng antibody natin. So ito yung structures, pentameric yung IgM. Ito ay, ay just graph na kung saan mo monitor yung uh, antibody titer against polyvirus. And ito yung days of immunization. So makikita nyo dito, so kailangan yung intindihan na may iba-ibang structures ang antibody. And at the same time, after immunization, may iba-ibang iba -iba yung levels ng, na meron tayo. So immediately after infection, ang naproproduce ay IgM 
although nagsisimula na rin yung IgG. But yung IgM, hindi siya uh, mataas yung affinity sa antigen. So, at taas agad siya, yun yung una ang agad ang ginagamit. Ng cell. Ang IgG, hindi siya agad produce kasi kailangan niya ng uh, maturation affinity. Pero once na produce yung IgG, uh, natitrigger siya at nagpipik siya ng mas matagal. At least up to 60 days. But in terms of IgG, mabilis lang siya. So, in application kapag ka may SARS, Kapag IgG lang ang nakita natin sa, sa isang in, virus infected na patient, posible na yung infection ay nangyari um, two months before or previously. Pero kung nakikita yung IgM when, or may nakikita ang IgM and IgG, um, nag-indicate siya na yung, na yung isang patient ay na, nasa early infection. Yung presence naman ng IgA is usually a, a mucosal uh, secretory. And IgD ay nakikita sa, sa, sa surface ng B-cells. Um, I, I am quite aware of my time and I will try to hurry. Just give me like 10 minutes. And meron tayong antibody na ina-identify sa cells. Ang antibodies usually nagbabind lang siya. Pero meron din tayong neutralizing antibody. Neutralizing antibody ay may ibang role. Ang neutralizing antibody ay, ay defense against many virus infection dahil neutralize na yung virus particles. So Posible man, mataas yung antibody levels natin, pero mababa yung neutralizing an antibodies. Kaya ngayon, sa, in the, sa, during the pandemic, minagawa namin sa lab ay in-identify yung levels ng antibody. And then, napaka-importante, especially ngayon, na every time na meron tayo na bagong variant, ina-identify natin yung levels ng neutralizing uh, activity ng antibody. Um, and kung nagbabago yung neutralizing activity ng um, na meron tayo sa serum or yung isang vaccinated patient towards yung iba-ibang variant na meron yung SARS-CoV-2. So it's really very important in uh, recovery for infection. So this is just how a concept of a neutralizing antibody is. Ang ginagawa namin sa lab ay dinadalute namin yung um, Serum samples, dinalagyan ng the same amount of, of virus, and then tinating na namin yung 50% of those na nagkukos ng 50% na neutralizing titer. So makikita nyo sa reports na usually ang nakasulat sa graphs ay neutralizing dose, it's called ND50. During COVID, um, yung mga COVID patient na nag recover, uh, Ang ginagawa ay kinokolekt nila yung serum sample, tapos, um, in, tapos in-isolate nila yung um, kinokolekt nila yung serum sample. And then tinetest siya for neutralizing activity. Kapag mataas ang neutralizing activity ng isang, ng isang serum sample, and usually for COVID, I think it's a collection. Uh, nagiging siyang candidate na magkaroon ng um, monoclonal antibodies for infection and can be used as a prophylaxis maybe need be guy for covid patients before exposure or as a therapy pero med hindi siya naging ganun ka successful recently with covid-19 and also nakita natin even with uh, omicron variant na uh, yung yung neutralizing activity monoclonals ito pala yung MAB stands for monoclonal antibody um, yun yung neutralizing activity usually, especially for Omicron, of this monoclonal has gone way, way below. So, dahil dun sa findings na yun, hindi ganun ka-effective yung available na monoclonal antibody natin to be used as a, a therapy for patients. And ito natin sa kapag may mga crystal structure, Whilst in identify natin yung antigenic site, in identify the new neutralization site. So this is just a, a crystal representation, an image for influenza A. Meron tayo mga neutralizing antigenic sites dahil napakarami ng research na identify natin kung ano yung specific sites. Importantly, 
kapag may pagbabago ka isang amino acid, posible siyang mag-cause ng um, ability ng vaccine para mag-change sa neutralizing activity. And yung change, changes na meron ng HIV, nakikita rin siya sa SARS-CoV-2. But huwag niyong kakalimutan na yung polyvirus natin, 50 years na natin ginagawa, but we're not changing. So, hindi lahat ng virus nagbabago ng, ng antigenic sites. Mayroong mga virus, in particular yung influenza, yung SARS, na nagbabago. So, importante na kapag nagdidesign ng vaccine, kailangan i-modify yung vaccine. Pero in the case of the polyvirus, we have been using the same um um, vaccine since 1950, and it has been used uh, until now. So, may iba iba yung mga properties ng mga virus. Uh, this is just a SARS CoV 2 spike. So, ito yung RNA binding domain and ito yung antibody. Our virus is already in the cytose, been a block, but in block din niya yung uncoating. So, hindi lang um, virus entry and pina prevent ng neutralizing antibodies. Um, which statement about antiviral antibodies is incorrect? Incorrect. So I hope, and I'll just be very quick, that they only neutralize uh, virus infection, infectivity, which is not true. Um, a cell-mediated immunity is uh, the presence of your CD8, cytotoxic C cells. Yung main concept dito, kapag ka na-identify na ng uh, CD8 cells, T cells, meron siyang um, um, peptide. Ang nangyayari, this is the mechanism, nangyayari, nagproproduce siya ng peptides such as granzyme B and perforin 4. And yung perforin 4, nagkakos siya ng uh, holes sa virus-infected cell. Yung granzyme B, pumapasok siya dun sa 4 and nagkakos siya ng apoptosis. So, ganito yung role ng uh, cytotoxic T lymphocyte, kung paano niya nilalize yung cell. And not just through yung granzyme B, yung, even yung presence ng or nagkakosya ng lysis kasi may changes ng uh, balance. And yung decision whether kailangan bang magproduce ng um, antibodies or magproduce ng cytotoxic T cells, na-identify siya based sa mixture ng peptides and uh, mix peptides and then cytokines. So once na ma-present siya, Depende sa kung ano mong cytokines ang na-produce ng cell. For example, IL-12, mag-trigger siya ng cytotoxicity. Pero kung IL-4, 5, 13, mag-trigger siya ng antibody production. Kung ibang cytokines, mag-trigger siya uh, ng tumor immunity. So, merong iba-iba ring pathway kung yung cells, kung lysis bang ba gagawin kung, or antibody production. And I just want to finish this off with yung concept ng uh, memory. Kasi napaka-important difference between uh, innate and adaptive is the presence of memory. So meron tayong memory B cells and then meron tayong memory T cells. And important ito kasi ang memory cells meron siyang diverse uh, amount diverse diversity or differences. So memory cells natin, so yung naive T cells, once na nagkaroon ng infection, nagtitrigger siya ng generation ng memory T cell. So diverse yung T cells, ito yun, which is not memory T cells. During infection, meron siyang burst in amount, pero mag reduce siya up to zero levels. Pero uh, central uh, memory T cells na nasa lymphoid organs or resident memory T cells. Yung resident memory T cells, posible siya na T uh, memory T cells na nasa lungs and they are just present there na kapag ka nagkaroon ng virus infection, ready na sila to trigger that secondary response. So, in summary, what I have just told you today is a lot. So first, the virus binds to epithelial cells. After yung binding, 
magkakosyan ng production ng cytokines. Yung production ng cytokines, may identify siya ng mga patrol sentinel cells. One of them ay ang dendritic cells. Yung dendritic cells, magpaprocess siya para magpresent. And then, um, it's either an MHC class 1 or class 2. And then, mag mag activate ang dendritic cells, magkakos ng conformational change. And then, magpunta siya sa lymphocyte, ipapresent niya sa lymph nodes, sa lymphocytic cells. In lymphocytes, i-identify niya depende sa cytokines and depende whether magpaproduce ng antibody or mag mag-trigger ng lysis ng cytotoxic uh, uh, CTL cells. And so this is what really happens when we have a virus immunity. You just have to understand that there is always a balance while yung body or yung host, any host, magpaproduce siya ng um, ways para masuppress yung virus infection. At the same time, merong mga evasion mechanisms naman na, or strategies ang viruses na directed towards specific uh, stages of um, these strategies of the host. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much for listening. I hope mas naintindihan nyo kapag uh, na-explain ng Tagalog and I hope mag-instill din sa inyo. I will definitely give you a copy of this lecture. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rosmilio, for that uh, very comprehensive talk. Um, I am sure all of our participants have learned a lot from your lecture today. Okay, so now for our Q&A. Kung may katanungan po ang ating mga participants, so
kilaot na ang manok, hudyat na ng pagpasok. Paglilingkod na walang kapalit sa bayan ng aming hati. Tara na, kaibigan, huwag kang magpaiwan. Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulo. Mahirap man ay kakayanin Sa pinagsamang lakas at galing Tagumpay ay mararating Tara na kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa ay susulo At ikabutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan na Recording Kung lahat stop. magtutulungan Tara na Sama-sama Itaguyod ang siyensya Maayos na bukas Para sa Pilipinas At ingabuti ng pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan na Recording in progress. Recording stop. Pangarap kong magkaroon ng mabilis at murang transportasyon para sa lahat. Pangarap kong masagot ang malnutrition. Pangarap ko pong magkaroon ng effective communication means for emergency. Pangarap kong ma-maximize yung renewable energy source and to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. Pangarap ko pong maging scientist. Ngayon na o simula na Humanda sabay-sabay akyat Hawak kamay tayo'y ang ating lipad Lipad Ating nabutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan ng aghag Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan
Tumitilaot na ang manok Hudyat na ng pagpasok Paglilingkod na walang kapalit Sa bayan ng aming hati Tara na, kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulo Ating abutin ang pangarap niwan Sa pamamagitan ng agham Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan Tara na, sama-sama Itaguyod ang siyensya Maayos na bukas para sa Pilipinas Hamon ay haharapin Mahirap man ay kakayanin Sa pinagsamang lakas at galing Tagumpay ay mararating Tara na, kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulo 